Hey guys, it's Lance at Mac Sound Solutions, and if you ever wanted to try using a touch monitor with your Mac, I've always wanted to try it, but never had the chance. But today, that has changed. UPerfect sent me one of their 22-inch UMAX 1440p resolution 60 hertz refresh rate touch monitors. So I can't wait to test this thing out. We're gonna try it with Mac OS. We're gonna try it with Windows. And my main reason for wanting to try this is to see, can I use it with my DAW? Will it work with with Pro Tools, can I use it as sort of a desktop mixer? So we're gonna hook it up to my M4 Pro Mac Mini and test it out. And full disclosure, you perfect sent me this monitor for free, but they are not influencing my review in any way. And they make all kinds of different portable monitors from touch screens to portable gaming monitors and even OLED monitors. So link in the description with a $50 discount code for any order over $300 or you can click on the link in the upper right hand corner of the video. So first thing we'll talk about is the picture quality of the monitor. There it is at the bottom there. And you can see I was able to get it really close to my other monitors as far as brightness and color. But out of the box, it was not good. Blacks were like crushed black, super black. But then I messed around with Apple's color profiles in Mac OS, and that made a world of difference. And I really drastically changed the settings on the monitor as well. I set the brightness to 100%. I think it's out of the box, it's like 50. And the contrast I brought way down to like 10%. And I also cranked up the color to 100%, except for the blue, I got at 89. And the thing is, out of the box, they're all set to like 50, and the brightness is set to 50, and it's very dark. But after some tweaking, I got it to a really good place. And now the skin tones and everything really match my MacBook Air, which is a very nice monitor. You know, I think Apple really knows how to calibrate their monitors. UPerfect definitely needs to work on their out of the box calibration. And here it is hooked up to my Bat Mac Mini. It's got a glossy coating, so pretty reflective. And the viewing angles are not bad, but they're not great. But what about the touch, Lance? Okay, we're gonna jump to that now and then we'll follow up with some more stuff. Okay, so now just a quick demo using the touch screen with Pro Tools. And then I'll talk about using the monitor with Mac OS and Windows. And as you can see, I can fit 24 faders on the monitor. Now I've got the screen resolution set really low because if you don't, it's very hard to click on things. So if we come over here to displays, you can see I've got it set to 720p, high DPI though. So it looks pretty clean. And the other thing is you've got to have your cursor on the display. If it's on this secondary display, this just becomes like a big mouse for the secondary display, but it's not something you want to do. So anyway, we're going to go to the top of the tune, going to hit play and I can just bring up my faders. And you can only do one fader at a time, unless you have them grouped, of course, then you can move multiple faders together. A quick mix up, but you can't ride up a couple of faders with a couple of fingers. And at this resolution, it's, you know, I can solo the bass, mute the bass. It works pretty well but you're limited to your screen space. Of course, you can set it to a higher resolution, but then things become hard to trigger, like your mute button. See, I'm pretty much nailing those. Uh, and you can also just scroll your screen like that. Now, what's interesting is if I keep my finger on there, it gets really hot in this area. Not so much up here, but down there, it's putting out some heat. And up here, it's not hot, but that's where the guts of the monitor are. So that's obviously got something to do with it. Now I can come up here. I can click on an EQ. At this low resolution setting, it works pretty darn well. I was kind of surprised that it almost seems viable. I'm clicking on a memory location. It went right to it and I was able to EQ, I could insert a plug-in. So this resolution seems to be the winner. Even at 1080, it's just more difficult to click on anything properly. You misclick a lot. But at the 720, 
high DPI, uh, it's just right, really. You know, if the buttons were just a little bigger, it would be okay. And yeah, you can change the pan, you can pretty much do anything, and it's super responsive. It, there seems to be almost no lag. The one thing I found later after messing around with it some more is I was able to three finger swipe between screens so I could have my edit screen on the same monitor and just swipe, which I know you can do that, but I didn't know the three finger swipe worked, and it does. So it's even better because then your cursor is always on this display. Of course, you're always looking down as opposed to looking forward. If your whole Pro Tools session is down there, then, you know, that might not be good for the neck after a while. So I gotta spend a little more time with it. I actually did put quite a bit of time into making this demo, and I know my hand's in the way a lot of the time. It's not easy to get a good shot on this, but the fact is, is when you're in the high DPI mode, that's when it works the best. It, you almost don't have to think about clicking on the buttons in the right place. They just seem to land pretty well. Whereas once you get into 1080p land, things start getting more difficult to nail your taps on the screen. So I think the low resolution, high DPI is the way to go, but then you're cutting off part of the mixer. You can't see all your inserts. Some of your plugins might literally go off the screen because people design plugins to be really big because people are using 4K monitors, you know. So I don't know. What do you guys think? It could also be really cool for virtual instruments. Unfortunately, I have like very little plugins loaded on my Mac Mini at the time. And at first, I could not figure out how to get this thing working with my Mac Pro, but now I know after I got it working with Windows and my old 2013 Mac Pro. I'm definitely gonna play around with this in Pro Tools some more and get it working with my Mac Pro, which is really my main Pro Tools computer. This was just sort of a test run. But you know, even at the low DPI, I was able to get 24 faders on the screen in narrow mix view, so that's pretty good. I'm definitely gonna give it a shot with my full setup and I'll probably make a follow-up video. The one thing I learned the hard way, because it's not in the manual, is you have to connect the monitor to your Mac and then boot it up. If your Mac is already on and you connect the monitor, you're not gonna get any touch functionality. It needs a cold boot from your Mac with it already connected and then touch and display work together all over one cable. And I'm running off my MacBook Air battery I'm not even plugged into the wall and I was able to get the touch and the monitor to work together so it is truly a portable monitor depending if your computer provides enough power if your computer needs more power to run the monitor you can use the power adapter and connect it to the second USB-C port and connect your computer to the first USB-C port they also give you a mini DVI input. So to enable touchscreen with the DVI, you need the power cable in C2, you need C1 going to your computer because that transmits the USB touch data. And you have to have the DVI of your computer plugged into the HD port if you're using DVI. So you need all three of them if you wanna use the DVI port and the touchscreen. And the DVI port does support 1440p. It's not just 1080. So you can still run the monitor at full resolution with the DVI port. Uperfect says that this monitor has HDR and it does have an HDR setting, but this is what it winds up looking like. Totally blown out. You got to turn HDR on on the Mac and you got to turn it on on the monitor. Then the HDR videos will play on YouTube, but the monitor's peak brightness is under 300 nits. So HDR 10 is 600 nits and that's why the highlights get totally blown out because the monitor cannot handle them. So you don't want to use HDR on this monitor, period. It works great in vertical mode for text. Uh, the text looks super sharp, I gotta say. It looked just as good as my other 1440 monitor, maybe even better. I connected it with my iPad Pro and it works as an additional display. You're not gonna get any touch functionality, but it did work nicely. So while macOS doesn't really have any touchscreen settings, you can go in there and tweak the interface to make it more touch friendly. 
and I tried playing some of those Apple arcade games because they're basically like iPad games, right? So they're set up for touch, and I found that these games worked really well. Like this golf game worked great. You can use a single finger and do stuff like, I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna take a golf shot with this, and it's just like an iPad, you know, except on a much bigger screen. And it looked great. These games looked awesome on this display. And of course, you could be using a controller and not use your finger, but with these kind of games, it's kind of fun to, you know, put your finger on the screen and take a shot. So here I'm running Windows off my 2013 Mac Pro, and it just works really well. Windows is much more touchscreen friendly than Mac OS. And you can go in there and adjust your touch settings. And you can see I'm scrolling with one finger. You can't do that in Mac OS. You can do it with two fingers, but it's quirky. You can swipe. You have multi-gesture modes. You can go adjust those. Mac OS doesn't have any of that stuff. Uh, when you try and do a two-finger scroll in Mac OS, it's not smooth. It, it does do it, but it's kind of quirky. Whereas Windows is pretty much set up out of the box to work work with a touch screen. But with some tweaks in Mac OS, I'm sure you could make it better. I know there's a third party app by a company called Touchbase called UPDD, but it's pretty pricey. It's like $60 for a single user and I've seen mixed reviews, but I will try and check that out. Or if you guys know of a good one, please let me know in the comments. And the monitor does have speakers built in, so in a pinch, you know, you got them, but you also have a headphone jack, so that's kind of cool. And the other thing it has is a OTG port on the Go port, which acts kind of like a hub. You can connect USB drives, keyboards, mice directly to the monitor, which in turn passes it through to your computer. So at first I thought the monitor was kind of a gimmick, but once I got the colors the way I wanted them and was able to control Pro Tools and using it with the DAW, it's basically like a poor man's raven. Overall, it's pretty cool and I definitely have to play with it some more. And check out the song I used in this video demo. It's one of my best friends and my wife is in the video. I mixed and edited it and it's on YouTube, so the link is in the description. Or you can click the link in the upper right hand corner. All right, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me that thumbs up, and I'll see you on the next Max Sound Solutions video.